this right here is all you need to catch bass in the fall. Well, folks, so today didn't go quite as planned. What I planned on doing was going to a new pond, throwing some top water, throwing some jigs, catching some fish, and then teaching you how I caught those fish like I normally do. Well, it's just one of those days. It's one of those days where it just, the things did not go right for me. If you want to see the footage from this morning, click to this time. It'll be kind of at the end of the video and uh, you'll see what happened. Things went bad in a hurry. So since the video didn't turn out as planned, I figured I still want to teach you guys how to fish, how to catch fish, especially right now, which is coming up to be the fall. It's Labor Day. The weather is cooling down, air temperatures cooling down, fish are moving shallow out of their summer haunts. And I'm going to go over the top five fall bass fishing baits that I like to use to catch fish in the fall. So this list is going to be somewhat brief. It's literally five lures. You can probably throw a hundred different lures in the fall and catch just as many fish, but these are the five... But these are the five lures that I personally catch the most fish on in the fall. Now, it is early fall. It's still September. I don't think fall officially begins until like mid or late September, so it is kind of technically early fall. There are baits that work well early fall, mid fall, and late fall. I'm just going to go over the ones that work in general for me. If you want to know the best baits for early fall, mid fall, late fall, check the link down below to my Patreon account. Every single month I send you a list of baits for that specific month and go over the different lures, the different colors to use, and how to use them. So check the link down below if you want to know that. But for today, it's just going to be your generic top five baits. I'm going to start off with top water, and then I've got two moving baits, and then two bottom baits. So for top water, a lot of different things work. You can throw walking baits, you can throw poppers, you can throw buzz baits. But for me, personally, for me, hands down, the best one is a walking bait. Now this one in particular is just your standard kind of walking top water bait like a spook. You can go with some multi-jointed ones like this that have a lip that'll kind of swim a little bit. Uh, you can go with small little spook juniors. Um, you can even go with poppers like I said here. But generally, day in, day out, just throwing a walking bait works really well early mornings and late at night. As far as location to throw that bait, you want to stick to around grass edges. If you still have grass where you're at, you want to throw them around those weed lines. Otherwise, I just beat the bank with uh, anything around rocks or if there's like a lay down tree that I can throw it next to, any type of cover. But generally, the shad move shallow in the fall and the bass are not too far behind them. So early morning, late in the evening, any type of low light conditions, those bass are shallow feeding on those shad. As far as colors go, you want to stick to natural shad. If you got shad in your lake, if you don't have shad and you only got bluegill, maybe some, some greens and stuff like that. Any, any type of natural, just match the hatch when it comes to top water. So that's top water. That's, that's basically all I've got. So walking baits is just my number one. So my number two bait is, is a moving bait. It's a reaction bait. This is another shad profile lure. And that one is a shallow square bill crankbait. You can see there just it can be a 1.0, it can be a 1.5, it can be a 2.5, it doesn't really matter. Shad are generally larger in the fall because they've had all year to grow. So don't be afraid to throw the bigger baits kind of like this dude here that's a little bit bigger than your uh, 1.5 that's probably like close to like a 2.0, 2.5. Anytime you're fishing in the fall is a great time to be throwing a square bill because it deflects off cover well. So if you're fishing around rocks or if you're fishing around brush or anything like that, it, it comes through the cover well, as well as it imitates a shad perfectly. It looks exactly like a shad. That looks exactly like a shad. As far as colors, again, stick to shad, stick to bluegill. If you've got bluegill, um, just stick to natural colors. In the location, I love fishing these around rock. Anytime I can get them around rocky points, especially if the wind is blowing, rocky points, jetties, dams, anything like that, just burning a a little shallow crankbait catches tons of fish. Now on to bait number three. Bait number three is another reaction bait and it also imitates a shad, but it is a little bit different than your square bill. And the one I'm talking about here is a spinner bait. This is a staple in every bass fisherman's box. Everybody's throwing a spinner bait and you normally see me throwing chatter baits. The one time I really focus on spinner baits is in the fall. The reason why I do that is because a spinner bait imitates a school of bait fish. That blade is a fish, that blade is a fish, this skirt is a fish. It imitates a group of fish, which in the fall, they group up. So you want to imitate a group of bait fish versus a chatterbait only imitates one shad. Doesn't mean you can't catch them on chatterbaits, but I think the big bass, especially the big bass, target the groups, the balls of bait. That's why often people catch them on Alabama rigs. So instead of throwing an Alabama rig and looking like an idiot, I throw a spinnerbait. Colors stick to white. Um, it can be gold blades, especially if the water's a little dingy. Throw some gold blades in there, otherwise silver blades work really well. Where spinnerbait really shines is on windy, overcast conditions. If you're fishing and it's cloudy and it looks like it's about to rain and the wind is just howling, 
you want to pick up that spinner weight and you want to go to the nearest windblown rocky point, rocky bank, anything like that, and just cast the spinner bait and burn it, stop and start it. Just make it look like shad or getting kind of blown up into those rocks. And I can guarantee you a bass will crush it. So that is my top water and my two reaction style moving baits. So let's say the fish aren't playing your top water game. They're just not interested and they're also not chasing bait fish up shallow. Maybe it's sunny, maybe it's not windy, and they're just not really biting the reaction stuff. That's when you want to go to one of these two options. Both of these are bottom baits and they fish completely different from one another. So the first one I like to start out with is a big fish catch machine. This is a bait that you can use year round but I really emphasize it in the fall and that right there is a bass fishing jig. This right here is just a new tech jig. You guys know that I like throwing new techs and it's a craw imitation. It looks just like a crawfish. It's like a brown craw color, a Tabasco craw with a little green pumpkin craw trailer. And let's say that there are not any shad in your lake. More than likely the bass are going to be feeding up on either bluegill or crawfish. In the case that they're feeding up on crawfish, it's definitely when you pick, want to pick up a jig. You want to throw this around any type of cover, any laydowns, even docks. But where I like to throw it is around rocks. For some reason, the crawfish just love to scurry in the rocks in the fall, and the bass are not too far behind them. The jig is honestly one of the most versatile fishing lures out there. You can flip it, you can skip it, you can punch it. I mean, you can literally do anything with it. You can drag it. So if you're going to only pick one bait to use for the fall, it's definitely got to be a jig because you can, like I said, you can flip it and pitch it, really drag it, or you can even swim it to imitate a bluegill or a crawfish that's trying to get away, anything like that. One trick that I do in the fall especially is I add rattles, but I basically add two little jig rattles to it. And for some reason in the fall, it just seems to work really well. So if you're searching for that big bite, the big bass, you're trying to get something over five pounds, I would definitely recommend going to a jig. You'll get a lot of bites, but you'll also get the quality. So let's say the fish aren't biting the jig. They're being really finicky. Maybe it's dead calm. There's no wind and it's sunny. What bait do you go with? Well, normally in the spring and the summer, you guys know I'd go to like a weightless Senko. But for some reason, the fish tend to hug the bottom in the fall. When that happens, I like to pick this dude up. And I actually featured this in my last video, and I caught a nice fish on it. And that is your standard shaky head worm. This is something that you can as well throw year-round, catch fish on it year-round. But in the fall, a big shaky head worm like this, something that's maybe like six, seven inches long, go with like a natural color like browns or green or green pumpkin, watermelon red, that type of stuff. Uh, but you want to just go with like a light wire finesse shaky head. And if you can find any offshore rock piles, especially any rocky points, whether they're windy or not wind blown, whether it's sunny, cloudy, for some reason, shaky heads work really well. If it is cloudy, I would recommend throwing a June bug color. Any, anytime it's cloudy, you want to throw like a darker color. And if it is sunny, then you want to go to like a watermelon or like a green pumpkin. So those right there are my top five favorite fall fishing baits. Like I said, if you want to know more in-depth stuff, um, I've got nine of my favorite baits for just the month of September posted up on my Patreon account, so go check that out. I normally don't like to do these types of videos where I just sit here and talk because I get it. They are boring. But part of my objective in doing YouTube videos is not only to entertain, but to teach you guys how to catch fish. And what better way to do that than to tell you the exact lures that I used to do it. So if you enjoyed this tips video, if you really like these like how-to top five bait video type stuff, please leave a thumbs up. You drop a comment if you don't like it. If you like it, just let me know. I really appreciate you guys watching. College started today, so that means a lot less fishing, but hopefully that doesn't mean less videos. I'm going to do my best to get videos pumped out as frequently as possible. But I know at the beginning of this video, I did mention I went fishing this morning. It didn't go out as planned. Stuff turned bad. And so that part of the video is going to start right Got one. Got him. Got him. Oh, oh, it's a good fish too. Oh, we ate that spook, baby. Woo! Top water fish. Oh, dude, it's a big large mouth. Oh gosh. Big large mouth. Oh, 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 oh gosh, she's barely hooked too. She's barely hooked. Come on, girly. Don't come off. Don't come off. Come on. Just barely hooked. Oh, he came off. Oh my God, that was like at least a three and a half. Not a good start to the day. Oh, you know what happened? Look at this. Look at this. My hook ripped out of my spook. The hook's gone. So I didn't like, it didn't come unbuttoned or anything. Like the hook literally ripped out of the bait. All right, new spook tied on.
Oh wow, just found some new shades.